When Dragon Ball Z was first brought to North America, it was altered a little bit, resulting in a lot of anger, but also a lot of laughter. So here is my list of the top 15 funniest alterations and cover-ups from the first English incarnation of Dragon Ball Z. Dragon, 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 Dragon Ball Z. Dragon, 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 Dragon Ball Now, before we actually get into the list, let's actually go over a brief history of the early Dragon Ball Z broadcast over here. Now, it was still produced by Funimation like it is today, but it was distributed by Saban and heavily censored and edited. The episodes we got in this incarnation of the show chopped out so much, it added up to a 14-episode difference between it and the original Japanese version. Now, some of these cuts were just for time and sped up the pace of the show. However, others were done to remove extreme acts of violence or anything slightly perverted. Why did they want to do Dragon Ball Z? The show wasn't dubbed by Funimation's in-house cast like it would be later on, but instead by Ocean Studios in Vancouver. After all, I was trained in the art of Kaioken. Huh? Kaioken? Why, you little... You're no match for me! I don't care how much you flirt! I'll have you know I was trained in the art of K.O. Ken. Huh? K.O. Ken? K.O. whatever! Who cares? I'm still gonna crush you! I don't care what you've learned! Now, despite all the other silliness going on with the show, most of the voice work was quite good, causing a lot of people to fight over which dub casts they liked the most. For me, the ideal cast would probably have a mix of both dub teams, allowing me to be decisively undecisive about the subject. This planet's not big enough for the both of us. No problemo. Make room for Dragon Ball Z next! Don't cry. We'll be right back. Saban also had some of the dumbest eye catches during this run of the show ever. So, everyone, pick up your foamy glasses of water and let's get this top 15 list of censorship and other crap started. Foamy water? <laughs> Master Roshi liked to drink beer occasionally, and even though it wasn't specifically talked about or anything, it would have obviously corrupted every single child watching DBZ to see him with a mug full of an amber-colored liquid. So, the digital paint was broken out to instead make it full of... a blue liquid, implying that it's water. I'll forgive you. Surprise! Hey! Uh... Was Roshi filling his mug from the sea? Oh, there's nothing quite like refreshing seawater! <laughs> it would have been just as easy, if not even easier, for them to color this dark brown to imply it's root beer or cola or something, but no, they went with foamy water. Don't drink beer, kids! It's bad for you! Drink seawater! Now, this digital paint technique, for the most part, was used to cover up acts of extreme violence on the show and a lot of the blood. That stuff, you can at least understand the rationale behind. And keep in mind, it wasn't as easy for them to do these alterations at the time, and it cost them money every time they did. So, wouldn't it be silly of them to censor things that were definitely allowed to be seen in pretty much any cartoon show? 
When Goku's evil brother Raditz showed up at the beginning of Dragon Ball Z, he kidnapped his son Gohan, which caused the little child to bawl his eyes out to an almost comedic level. So obviously, they needed to take the time to remove Gohan's tears. Did they really not have enough to censor on the show as it was? We had to shield people from a child's tears? Trigger warning, guys. Tears. Oops, was too slow on that one. What's even better about this nonsense censorship is it's nonsense censorship that isn't even consistent. Because later on in this same episode, Gohan gets a bit upset and oh, what is that strange liquid emitting from his eyes? That is just obscene, I tell ya! Maybe he's allowed to cry, but only to a certain extent? Or they just decided, oh, well, he should not be at the crying point yet in this scene. He can cry later, but not here. It's a wonderful thing just trying to figure out why on a lot of these things. We're gonna get into that most infamous way early Dragon Ball Z tried to sugarcoat death later in this list, but the show would always try to come up with other ways to have the characters say they almost died instead of using that ugly death word. So the head Krillin utter this nonsense. And now to finish you off! Man, I don't believe this! If Vegeta knew he was so powerful, how come he almost let us go the way of the dinosaurs, huh? We get the implication, sure, they'd be extinct, but there's a reason why this line makes no sense whatsoever for a character in Dragon Ball to say. Dinosaurs are not extinct in this universe. They have been seen quite often in the series, and there were parts earlier where Gohan was training in the wilderness that he ran into dinosaurs, so they really have no excuse to have put this line in there. And since dinosaurs are a surviving species here, it'd make as much sense if Krillin had said, How come he almost let us go the way of the house cat, huh? What? You mean alive on Earth? Yeah, totally not Mondo Cool. How come he almost let us go the way of the dinosaurs, huh? Yeah. I better stop before this list goes the way of the easily offended internet commander. While Gohan was doing his training in the wilderness, he got himself stuck on top of a little cliff area, and one of Piccolo's first overly nice acts in the series was leaving him a few apples. Upon finding them, Gohan is a bit confused about where they came from, and a thought bubble appears of an apple tree. Or does it? Deemed too extreme for kids, Gohan's disgusting display of thinking of an apple tree was removed from Dragon Ball Z's original broadcast broadcast in English, and rightfully so. That was just too much. Seriously though, this is just a confusing edit, as they still have Gohan think, But I don't see any trees. Oh well. <laughs> so, they conveyed the exact same point, but showing the thought bubble with the apple tree had to go? Uh, I'm sure it made sense at the time. No I'm not! Maybe we should try to find just one of the Dragon Balls so we can hide it from them. It would stop them from getting them all together and making a wish. They'd just hunt down the rest of the Namex trying to get their dirty hands on it and, and probably hurt them too. Uh, no way! That's right! People get hurt in Dragon Ball. 
One of early Dragon Ball Z's funniest ways to try and pretend death didn't exist was to just make believe that people that were getting killed weren't dead. Run and get help! You got it! That was close. Your brother may have escaped, but not you. We'll take you back to your dad and brother later. No. And one of their oddest ways to try and accomplish this with dead people right on the screen was just to make them breathe heavily after getting killed. takes a lot out of you. <laughs> I love what little sense it makes for them to be out of breath during a lot of these too. I guess this hurting being put on is just happening to knock the wind out of these Namics every time. They're not dead guys, just listen to that breathing. Sure they'll never get up and do anything ever again, but they live full lives on the ground panting after this. Well, until the planet blew up, but death existed again at that point. <laughs> oh, never mind. So, some of the lines characters would spout in early Dragon Ball Z just seem completely random. And much like the go the way of the dinosaurs line, this line they gave Vegeta is at complete odds with the actual show. It was your genius father who invented this little technique. My father? We ran into some radical weaponry on Rigal 7, and things were looking grim until your father did this. <laughs> Your father was an average fighter, Kakarot, but he was a brilliant scientist! This guy? This guy here was a brilliant scientist, was he, Vegeta? Bardock, do you remember what day your son was born? No, but that was a long time ago. It was not, you lazy bum. Yesterday? Come on! Goku's father, Bardock, was depicted as just a fighter. He was never shown doing anything even remotely scientific, so for them to give Vegeta this line was pretty asinine. And it's not like they had no way of knowing either. The special about Goku's father had been out for quite a while in Japan. This was just a case of them being ignorant of the material they were writing for, which is why you don't just throw out random things about characters that you don't even know if are remotely true. He's insane! Frieza! Come out and fight me! He was a brilliant scientist! <laughs> I love being a scientist. It's what will make me go back in time instead of being blown up here. He was a brilliant scientist! After Vegeta uses Goku's brilliant scientist father's technique to create a fake moon, it turns him into a giant ape. Yeah, the Saiyan race is kind of a bunch of were monkeys. When a Saiyan sees a full moon, they'll transform into the great ape known as an Ozaru, unless they no longer have a tail. Now, as a child, Goku still had his tail, so there were a few times this caused some disasters, but he has never conscience of them. However, now having seen Vegeta turning into this creature, Goku realizes... 
On the night of a full moon, a giant monster ape comes out and does truly terrible things. You must beware. Now I see. He's the one responsible for destroying the martial arts stadium. Yeah, and he's the one who stomped on all those innocent people and stepped on my grandfather. Yes, Goku, it was Vegeta who destroyed the martial arts ring during that tournament and killed your grandfather. Despite him never having been to Earth before now, but that's really just a minor inconvenience. Everything bad that has ever happened to you can pretty much be summed up by... Thanks, Vegeta! Of course, Goku's actual realization here was a much sadder one, as he realized it was him who squashed his grandfather while in this form. I get it now. I'm the one who destroyed the stadium at the World Tournament, and I'm the one who... who... who crushed my grandpa! Why didn't anyone tell me? All these years, Master Roshi and the others, they must have known the truth. I'm sorry, Grandpa. I don't know if there's any way I can make it up to you. I'm gonna try. I can see why with them wanting to sidestep death all the time, them not wanting to mention that Goku accidentally stepped on his grandfather and squashed him, but why keep the line at all if you're just gonna mangle it into him blaming someone who wasn't there? Thanks, Vegeta! Before we get into the main course of Stupid on this edit, I'm going to give a special mention here to their censoring of some Japanese kanji characters on the bathroom door that stated occupied. If they had translated it, that'd be one thing, but in the same scene you can clearly see Japanese on the magazine that Roshi is looking at. <sighs> Anyway, if that wasn't stupid enough for you, while Roshi is on the toilet here, Goku contacts him from the afterlife. I mean, other dimension. Master Roshi, excited after having talked to Goku, runs out of the bathroom before quite pulling his pants up. Or did he? That's right, this shot called for the digital paint censoring because... you see... His lag? It's not like Roshi was helicoptering his cock at everyone. He just hadn't quite pulled his pants up all the way for a slightly comedic bit to this moment. But clearly, knees are far too suggestive for the kids. Keep your eyes on the birdie. What in the fuck, Raditz? Whew, there we go. Were they just looking to waste money, or did they have some kind of sensor quota to meet? I don't understand. Well, you probably shouldn't listen to me. I saw all kinds of knees when I was a kid, so my head's all kinds of screwed up. Did you think the digital paint silliness stopped at old man's knees? Don't worry, there's an even dumber one! Yeah, Jirobi is a bit of a tool and a moron. When he cut off Vegeta's tail, it was pretty much the most useful thing he ever did. So, he's a mostly comic relief-y guy, and there was a scene where in the background he was picking his nose while an important conversation was going on. But that was just far too vile. Sexual... Immature? Do we censor immaturity now? Well, in the Saban distributed DBZ we do. Because they cut off Yajirobe's finger to make it look like he's sticking it in his mouth instead. Because that's infinitely better, apparently. At this point, someone must just have been bored. This is probably the only case of nose picking being censored in the world. World. Because believe me, there is nothing wrong with showing someone picking their n And now back to our show! Hi, I'm Piccolo. I can grow my arm back. You can't, so play safe. Watch out, Tien! Above you! Tien, no! You just wait till it grows.
yourselves back! Bravo, Tien. Bravo. Come on, everyone, give him a hand! Ha! So, Tien gets part of his arm knocked off during his fight with Nappa, and I guess they weren't quite willing to go through the effort of painting a fake arm onto him for the rest of that battle. I mean, after all, they did have knees and nose picking to take care of, so instead, Tien spouts a line about his arm growing back. You just wait till it grows back! Tien is a descendant of people known as the Three-Eyed Clan, but besides that, he is human. Humans don't grow their arms back. I'm pretty sure I would have seen that with my third eye by now. Now, Tien did have a move known as the Four Witches Technique, which allowed him to grow two extra arms, but I don't think this would have had anything to do with him regrowing his limbs. This move in Japanese translates to Four Supernatural Fists, and those weren't a permanent thing, obviously. When Goku put Tien in a Boston Crab, it weakened him to the point that his extra arms disappeared, meaning that they were an energy-based thing. And I I'm putting way more thought into this stupid thing than I should be. And considering Bardock is a brilliant scientist, I'm fairly certain that no one who was writing these scripts actually watched this episode from the original Dragon Ball and thought, Ooh, maybe Tien really can regrow his arm. If Tien had used this technique, I think he would have grown two stumps on the one side. That's how it works, right Tien? As a matter of fact, it isn't. Oh, shut up, Tien, you stupid three-eyed cowboy. Looks like I'm back in the saddle. What luck. This three-eyed cowboy is going for one last ride. As a matter of fact, it isn't. Hey, who wants to take a trip to another dimension? That sounds fun, right? Well, except you'd be dead. Definitely the most infamous and best way the original English DBZ tried to sugarcoat death was their substituting it out every time a character died with saying they went to another, new, or next dimension. Chi Chi, uh, guess what? Goku's trapped in another dimension. <laughs> he thinks he's in the next dimension when he's on the throne. Green pipsqueak, I'll send you into another dimension. Jim, yeah. is my ESP working? I'm going to take this big bully into another dimension. I'm facing into another dimension. We can't let them join Kakarot. It's too risky. Quick, I want them all in the next dimension. It sounded as if you were trying to second guess one of my decisions. <laughs> too bad. Guess you were blasted to another dimension for no reason at all. What's weird is though, when this version of Dragon Ball Z first aired, there were actually a few mentions of death in the beginning three episodes. But these were all modified for later airings. This isn't good. I smell death in the air. <laughs> oh, this isn't good. That's enough! Fools, I could kill you all right now. That's enough! Don't get me mad. Even when death was said, and it didn't mean literal death, it was just an expression, it had to be censored. Seriously. Ugh, I'm going to worry myself to death. Ugh, all this worrying is going to give me wrinkles. Still, these first three episodes kept a word that was too extreme for them to ever use again. Eliminate. Eliminate 100 of the species here by tomorrow. What was that, Raditz? I have a little exercise for you. Keep your eyes on the birdie. 100 of the species to another dimension by tomorrow. That's more like it. So after these three gritty episodes, death didn't exist and all you had to do was have the characters awkwardly talk about other dimensions instead. I lied when I said you could go, at least partially lied, for I will let you go to another dimension! Maybe you won't be such a disappointment in the next dimension! Time to launch someone into another dimension! See ya! <laughs> If I cross your new dimension. Except for odd occasions where they apparently forgot. Join me or perish. Oh right, I'll jump, but if I crash and die, I'm gonna be very, very upset! 
This silly next dimension avoidance of death was said so much it became a running joke forever attached to Dragon Ball. It was just so ridiculous to act like, oh, they're just going on a trip instead of being killed, when that was clearly what was always happening on screen. I'm almost surprised they never tried painting in a suitcase into some of these shots. I've got your things all packed for your trip to the next dimension. Thanks, Vegeta! Oh! He's having a great time, Bon Voyage Nappa. What they did do, though, was have people fade away to another dimension and went through the effort of pretending corpses weren't laying around. When on the actual show, <laughs> yeah, not so much. They actually showed them retrieving their friends' dead bodies. Maybe the next dimension will make more sense. In the next dimension. So, what's the number one stop when you take a trip to the next dimension? Why the home for infinite losers, of course. <laughs> oh, go to HFIL. After Goku was killed during the battle with his brother in the afterlife dimension, he was allowed to travel to King Kai's planet to be trained by him, and to get there he had to travel along Snake Way. But if you fall off Snake Way, you go to hell. Literally! But that was something that was actually a bit too extreme for them, so in a bit of creative censorship, they turned hell into... Don't you realize where you are? Huh? This is the land of no return! That's right. <laughs> Right, bud, and we run the home for the infinite losers. Once a man comes here, there's no going back. <laughs> HFIL, much like another dimension, has had some serious lasting power as it was amazingly silly and pretty much everyone knew what they were actually looking at. They probably could have just cut this episode and make it look like Goku never fell off Snake Way, but instead they went through this effort of modifying the ogre demon's shirts from saying hell to their stand-in acronym, HFIL. You gotta give it to them for coming up with this replacement for hell, but man, home for infinite losers? Yeah, that'll go over well when HFIL freezes over. Nappa was a bastard who killed a lot of people. Oops, I mean Nappa was a big bully who blew up a bunch of empty things. So the show must go on, huh? First sign of trouble and those cowards run away! So here we get into some of the really funny covering for death lines in the show. Basically, as Nappa was killing people, they'd just throw out some lines to pretend he didn't. like to swim but nothing even comes close to the cargo robot except for the two numbers after this one huh? what? Cargo robot? What? These reporters brought an unmanned cargo aircraft to film a battle with these aliens? How does that work? Why would anyone have an unmanned helicopter flying with them? There is just absolutely no sense with this one. Off to do my report. Better not forget the cargo robot. You know, that way if I need my bottled water or something, all I have to do is hop over to the unmanned cargo ship that will be flying alongside us. If you're stupid enough to bring a cargo robot, you deserve to die. The 
Saiyan invasion on Earth really is a gold mine for the lame cover-up lines for death. And this is another one thrown out by our good old limb regenerating three-eyed cowboy. Later on in that same episode after the destruction of the cargo robot, the reporters get a little too close to the scene again and... So you want some news, do you? It's your five seconds of fame! can see their parachutes! They're okay. You'd think he would see better with three eyes. This one is absolutely amazing because you can clearly see no one bails from this helicopter beforehand and while Tien is claiming he sees parachutes, we are shown nothing of the sort. I'm actually surprised they didn't try to add parachutes. Look! I can see their parachutes! They're okay. I love imagining this line being said pretty much whenever there's an explosion in Dragon Ball Z and someone obviously dies. Uh, help me! Uh, Look! I can see their parachutes! Uh, They're okay. See their parachutes! They're okay! Gee, Vegeta, that guy said we were their heroes. Heroes ain't all they're cracked up to be. <laughs> oh, Lemlia, my darling! Lemlia, my darling! At last we are together! Forever! I can see their parachutes! They're okay. Thank you, Tien. We finally found the use for that third eye of yours. Helps you to see bullshit. This is my absolute favorite cover-up line in all of early Dragon Ball Z. Too bad it's Sunday. buildings would have been filled up tomorrow. This line is just nonsense for so many reasons. I love it. First, for Vegeta to even make a quip about it being Sunday is completely asinine because he's an alien and this is his first trip to Earth. Despite what Goku thinks, Vegeta would have no knowledge of Earth's days of the week at this point, let alone know that Sunday is the day of rest because of Christian beliefs. Too bad it's Sunday. I'd have time to search for the Dragon Balls tomorrow, but I need to get to Sunday school. And, you know, despite some things not being open on Sunday, or at least not open as long, I've yet to see a Sunday evacuation. You know, on Sunday, giant buildings are just completely abandoned. Because it's Sunday! Too bad it's Sunday. No one actually gets killed to the next dimension until tomorrow. And here's the cherry on top of the evacuation Sunday. So what should we do with these goddamn fools? They're annoying me! <laughs> They're okay. That area may have been evacuated, but it'll give him something to think about. Yes, Nappa. Too bad it's Sunday. Those people standing right in front of us as you did that attack would have been real tomorrow. 
It's just amazing all the lengths they went to just so that they could pretend people didn't really die on this show. They inserted these types of lines for characters despite how little sense they made, and then they didn't even refer to it as death anyway. It was just a little trip to another dimension. So we could handle actual main characters getting next dimensioned, but random people, nah, they escaped on their parachutes because it's Sunday. All the stuff they did to the show during its original run over here is great. For completely stupid reasons, but still, it's great. And you know, despite all the stupidity, the show still became popular anyway. But it would take us a few years later to learn the awful seedy truth about this show. There was no home for the infinite losers. Gohan thought of apple trees. Master Roshi didn't quite pull his pants up all the way, and yeah, Jerobi! Too bad it's Sunday. That nose would have been filled up tomorrow. And that's my list of the funniest censorship and modifications from the original 53 English episodes of Dragon Ball Z. After this point, there was far less censorship and everything was perfect. Kakarot and Ginyu are back there clobbering each other, while the runts are up ahead finding the Dragon Balls for me. This is too good to be true. <laughs> I'll just wait until the Earthlings find out what the password is. Then I'll step in and make my wish. That's right, if there's anything I've learned from this whole ordeal, it's that I am a friggin' genius. <laughs> Even with Captain Ginyu inside of Goku's body, it doesn't take away from Goku's original strength. Nice move, but your shoe came untied. I'm not going to fall for that. I don't even have shoelaces. Darn. The Eternal Dragon is summoned once again and right in Bulma's backyard. In clear violation of the neighborhood leash law, have our friends from Earth finally gone too far? Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Krillin's in the house. Whoa, Mondo Cool. That's right, boys. Mondo Cool. Well, things got better eventually. In the next dimension, it's just too bad it's Sunday. This list would have actually been funny tomorrow. Sunday! I would have said an overused meme tomorrow.